Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my vlog. I'm Robin or a Hobbit Treating List. And this week we are going to finish my May TBR. And by finish, I mean I'm going to read two more books from it and then promptly switch over to June because I'm way more excited about it. <laughs> so let's, let's get into it. So I wanted to film before I forget. I'm, I was just about to go on a walk and start listening to the next chapter of Swordcatcher. I was like, no, I need to film a clip first. <laughs> so last night I finished reading Summer Lightning. Again, I thought it was really good. Uh, for people who haven't watched the last two vlogs where I've been reading this book, it's a book by P.G. Woodhouse. And so it is very funny with lots of miscommunications and uh, assumptions and just tension steadily building until we get to like the resolution pretty much. Summer Lightning is about the Empress of Landings, which is a prize pig who belongs to Clarence, uh, Lord Emsworth, and he loves his pig. And <laughs> Emsworth is, he's, he's so fun. You know, he's just, he cares about his pig, his garden, that's about it. <laughs> and so when the Empress goes missing, he understandably is freaked out and, and wants to know who took her and where is she and he just wants her back. And there is a subplot involving two couples, one of which has Clarence's nephew, Ronald, uh, and he is engaged to a chorus girl which is a big no-no because she's not in his class. And then the other one involves Clarence's niece, Millicent, who is betrothed to Clarence's secretary, uh, which is also sort of a no-no, but that one's like more acceptable. And so they're trying to figure out how to get permission to marry and the Empress factors into that. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really funny. And I mentioned this in last week's vlog as well. Of like, it was just nice to read a novel that I actually enjoyed. I feel like the past couple Woodhouse novels that I've read have sort of dragged if I didn't like outright just not like them. <laughs> so it, it was, it was nice to, to get to read a Woodhouse and just enjoy it again. And I, I don't know like, I mentioned this last week as well. I don't know if it was because it was Blaney's Castle, which I know I already like, or there was just like less fat phobia, which had been like pretty prominent in the last like three or four books. I don't know. Or maybe it's just because it was a novel. I don't know. And so it, it felt like there was more time for me to get invested in the plot. Whereas the last book that I read, which was Very Good G's, was a collection of short stories. And so they all started feeling like the same and just too quick <laughs> so there is that so I, I gave it <laughs> oh I have I balanced it on I balanced the camera on the cat tree Bastion is on the cat tree and he's not amused at me talking to myself while he's trying to nap so I can do that I'm almost done buddy <laughs> so I gave Summer Lightning four stars like I said, I enjoyed it a lot. If you are interested in picking up a Woodhouse book, I definitely recommend starting with Blaney's Castle. Just because it's, it's just really enjoyable. You know, and it takes a place at a, a country estate in England. So it's very, like, cozy. So there's that. Like I said, I'm about to go for a walk, listen to Swordcatcher, which I'll be listening tomorrow today. I started reading last night Antiquity in Gotham because I want to try to finish that before moving on to my June TBR. Uh, I only read like two pages, so, so there's, it's literally just the introduction of the author explaining why she decided to write Antiquity in Gotham, which is about the ancient influences on New York's architecture. So it should be really interesting. Uh, I, I really enjoy architecture, and so it'd be nice <laughs> to learn a little bit more about like, I especially like ancient influence architecture, so it'll be It'll be nice, but I am worried that it is a nonfiction book and that it might take me a little bit. But I technically have three whole days before like June hits, although I would like to get it done before then. 
So we will see, but I'm going to go for my walk. So I do make this kind of quick because I'm already late to leave for work, but I had filmed Wednesday morning. So I listened to about, I don't even know, man, two and a half hours of Swordcatcher that day. Uh, I have, I want to say like I have like six left because I also listened to another like 40-ish minutes yesterday. So I have like six hours left. I will finish it this weekend because I have... I have to drive to work, I have to drive to Temple, and I have to drive home tonight. So that's going to be three and a half-ish hours. And then I work Sunday. And so by that point, I will just finish it because <laughs> I'll have like an hour left. There's that. I'm enjoying it. It's definitely picking up the pace. I'm kind of worried about one of the main characters because he's he has the correct intentions, but he's doing something that could be interpreted as treason <laughs> and so I'm kind of worried like I think he'll be fine but I I'm more worried about like his his mental and emotional well-being rather than his physical well-being I think he will be alive by the end of the book I don't know like what state his relationships are going to be in <laughs> I also think that I know what the pairings are going to be now which like I'm okay with I'm okay with them I do, I do still wish there was more, like, queerness, uh, but I'm okay with, with where I think this is going. <laughs> I don't think I talked about, like, what the synopsis of Swordcatcher is. <sighs> okay, so we have two main characters. Kel is the Swordcatcher for Prince Connor, which means that he looks very similar, and through magic, he is able to take Connor's place if there's ever a concern about safety, and so he's essentially... A doppelganger that is is meant to die for Connor. And then we have Lynn, who is part of the Ashkar people, who are the only people in this world who have magic, although it's it's not like like super powerful magic. But because of that, because magic used to exist in this world, now it doesn't, and the Ashkar are the only ones who has like a remnant of magic, the other people <laughs> Uh, hate them <laughs> and so they're you know it's not great but Lynn is a physician and she's became a physician to try to heal her best friend who has this like mysterious illness and Lynn and Kel end up meeting end up having mutual people in common I don't think they're gonna be together <laughs> maybe I don't know they have kissed <laughs> but that was like a distraction so so yeah, it, it's the beginning of an epic fantasy trilogy, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Amy picked it. <laughs> Other than that, I did start reading the first two chapters of Antiquity and Gotham. I really, I'm really enjoying it, actually. Especially because, like, I've been to New York City, I've seen some of the buildings that I've talked about. Not all of them, obviously. And so it, it is really interesting to learn about the antique like influence on New York City architecture and why uh, because they're usually like one very practical reasons but two very like interesting <laughs> reasons for why certain architecture styles are chosen for certain buildings so that's really cool I'm hoping to read like way more tonight I would like to have it done <laughs> but I have only read like 35 pages and it's like 200 pages. So we'll, we'll see. And other than that, I <laughs> have had a rough like mental health experience on Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> and Thursday, I was actually in a pretty good mood. I had a writing date with my friend Ellis, but I drank like a 12 ounce bottle of sangria and it's like 14 percent so i got a little tipsy so i was not going to read about architecture so instead i started the next book in the bucknell club series which is arrival for rivington and it is about <laughs> these two men 
who this is their first season. It's it's a Regency romance, and so there there's a season, you know, where you go out to a bunch of like balls and routes and everything and try to meet your future spouse. In this world, same-sex marriage has been um, legalized, especially for the sake of the peerage, to... I have the best word to describe this, to, to ease the burden of inheritance. Because if you're a same-sex marriage, you can't have children to pass the inheritance on to. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying the series. Arrival for Rivington is about these two guys whose first season it is, and they both set their sights on Lord Solden, who is actually in the next book. And through their rivalry, they end up feeling things for each other. <laughs> um, I'm about halfway through it, honestly. I got really sucked into it. And they're both so... <laughs> At first glance, they're both very shallow. I have already seen some character growth halfway through. I would like to, them to have more compassion for other people, <laughs> but they're working on it. It's really cute. I, I actually laughed out loud last night and Chris was like, what? I'm like, it's too much to explain. <laughs> so I, I'm enjoying it. I'll probably finish that this weekend as well. <sighs> okay, that's it. I have to go. I'm late. <laughs> so I will check in later. It's now Sunday morning. I'm trying to remember the last thing I talked about. The last thing I talked about was... What was the last thing I talked about? <laughs> so if the last time I recorded was Friday morning, I listened to a lot more Swordcatcher. I actually only have like an hour and a half left, so I will probably finish it on my drive to work, which means that I will start my next audiobook, which is 100 Boyfriends. On my drive back. So with Swordcatcher, it sucks because like <laughs> I ended on a cliffhanger, <laughs> and I I don't want to don't want to talk about it because I you know obviously don't want to give away spoilers, but things are starting to really escalate, and I worry <laughs> that the book itself is going to end on a cliffhanger because there's only an hour and a half left. And so I'm just like, something has to happen. <laughs> and so I'm trying to remember that like, this is a series. And so the resolution does not necessarily need to happen at the end of this book. Like series often have cliffhangers where they stop in the middle of the plot and that is okay, even though it drives me crazy. <laughs> like I, I like books that have a, a resolution point like at least wrap up the plots that were brought up in this book that is not the overarching plot although I guess technically that has happened so I don't know I am enjoying the book and I I could pretty confidently say it's probably gonna be like a four star which is good so I, I will finish that today I also Friday, I think I, I think I only read one more chapter of Antiquity in Gotham. I think what I'm going to do so that I don't get like massively postponed on my June TBR is I'm going to still read Antiquity in Gotham, but I'm going to read it um, on my work days whenever I, I have a break in meetings because that worked really well when I was reading Ethical Slut. And I only have I think like seven more chapters of Antiquity in Gotham and like they go fast actually like it's actually a, a really like it's well written and it's easily understandable for most things <laughs> like most things that are, are described in like architecture terms there are pictures where I can match up like okay that's what this means some of them aren't but that's okay because it's just making me like more interested and so I think I'm going to bring in Secret in Gotham. I'm going to read it today. I have an hour and a half break between meetings 
So I will read during that and maybe get like two chapters done. And then when I get home tonight, I will start reading The Lodger that summer. So there's that. And then <laughs> the final thing that I read was that I finished reading Arrival for Rivington, uh, which is part of the Bucknall Club series. And it's the third book. I think I already described it. And honestly, like, that was that was cute. It was, it was cute as shit. And it was interesting because something about the previous two books, like, they've had some spicy scenes, but the spicy scenes were... I'm trying to think of what the first one was. I think the second one, there was, like, a lot of, like, rutting. And there was rutting in this one. I'm trying to think of what was in the first book. I know that it wasn't... There's no good way, good way for me to say this. It's not like I have to worry about being monetized. <laughs> there wasn't anal, which is fine. I don't necessarily need that. I, I was just, it's more surprise more than anything, especially with like how connected both of those pairings were, but it's not needed. And so, but there was anal in this one, which I thought was really interesting because the people in this pairing, Loftus and Morgan, they're both, this is their first season. They're both 18. And they're both very, like, they're naive in the ways of sex. And so they had anal, and it was really cute. Like, it was, it was a really good description of, like, a first time. Uh, and so I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really great. I gave it four stars. Like, I, I thought it was awesome. I might wait, like, at least a couple days before I get the next book in the series. Uh, I'm just reading them on my Kindle just like whenever I have spare time I just pull it up which seems to be working for me <laughs> but those are the books I read this weekend I'm gonna head to work and I will fill you in tomorrow probably most likely when I wrap up the vlog what I thought of Swordcatcher <laughs> so stay tuned <laughs> good morning everyone I think this is our new filming spot uh because Chris and I got new curtains and they're a little bit like they're not thicker but they're not as as mobile as the other ones and so I can't really do my other spot which is like right over there but this is fine <laughs> trying to think so yesterday morning on the way to work I finished sword catcher um I only had like an hour and a half left so that's not surprising I really enjoyed it I'm I was correct, it ended on a cliffhanger for both plots. <laughs> uh, I I sort of predicted one of them, but the other one I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. Everyone has, you know, something about them, but they're, they're very well-rounded and they all operate well together. I'm very intrigued by one of the romances <laughs> so yeah i'm just i'm really i really want the sequel and it doesn't come out till i think 2025 which sucks um i think it comes out like next spring <laughs> but i did give it four stars so yay <laughs> and that was my last book of may I did not start listening to another one, another audiobook yet. I was planning on it, but Swordcatcher was still very much like in my head. <laughs> and I had sort of not a rough day at work, but like an interesting day at work that wouldn't allow me to just like jump into a new book. So I will start listening to 100 Boyfriends next week. And then yeah, I will also start my June TBR officially next week because I, I did read another chapter of Antiquity in Gotham and I think I'm just going to do, I think I mentioned this earlier, I'm just going to do what I did with the other nonfiction book I read in like March and just read during my breaks um, at from work. And so I'll only read that on my work days and once I'm done with like Pretty much however many breaks in the day I have, 
is how many chapters I read. So honestly, it shouldn't take me more than a week. <laughs> but here's how read. So, so yeah, so that's pretty much what I did. I, I, I got home, the boys were, were shooting basketball, uh, and then we got dinner and we went grocery shopping. So like, I didn't really do any more reading. I was just like, I was very tired. I was exhausted from my day, quite honestly. <laughs> but that's about it that's what that's what I've got so next week will be more exciting there will be pride events and yay I I love June it makes me happy it's in the summer it's in the sun and it's pride you know it's just nice <laughs> so I'm gonna let you all go thank you so much for watching uh leave me a comment Again, if, if you like any of the books that I read, if you've also read Swordcatcher, if you want to talk about it, uh, <laughs> like the video, subscribe, click the notification bell, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.